Hallelujah. Well, we're going to have a wonderful time tonight. Amen. Amen. Uh, we've got two speakers tonight, not counting me. And I don't know if I'm speaking yet or not. Uh, we, we just give that to God. But we have two speakers tonight, and I have asked uh, two different ones to come and speak. And uh, it doesn't matter to me who goes first. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, Brother William. Brother William's going to go first, and uh, I'm not going to tell you who the next one is. Hallelujah. And uh, they've got some topics that they're going to speak on, and I want you to get on board with them because what they're about to talk about is your purpose again. For those who weren't here, I gave you five questions to answer so you would know the purpose that God has for your life. We're about to look at those. Amen. Only a couple tonight. Amen? But we're going to look at it from what each of these have received so far. Amen. Amen. I was back. <laughs> It'll be good. Can you do it? I said, I'm going to get it. I didn't put a whole lot together. My topic's on why am I here, boy? We can't sell a lot, don't we? Amen. I'm going to start out reading from Acts 20, 24. Neither can I, my life, dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course, my joy, the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus Christ, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Yes. What am I here for? I, I pretty much I'll put all these questions to myself and put a short answer to each one of them. Bear with me. Hold the mic up a little bit. Yeah. I am here for God's pleasure. Yes. That is to worship Him. Yes. That's yes. what I put here. That's good. I am here for my family. Mm. Here for fellowship. My biological family and my church family. Everybody do out out of the community. Yeah. God made me to transform into the likeness of His Son, Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. That's what I try to do every day. Yeah. All day. I fail all day, every day. But I try to do it every day. God is more interested in what I am and what I am than what I do. He is far, far more interested in my beings and in what I am doing. Come on. That's good. What is God? I'm trying to be my way. <laughs> he is far more interested in my being and in what I am doing. What is God's will for my life? <laughs> my job or my career? You know what? I can probably have a dozen different careers, which I've had good many, yeah. most of all for it. <laughs> because of my character, I'm trying to try to read my right. <laughs> probably the dozen things that in my career, God would say, that's fine. We are here to do things. We are here to make a living. Right. But, God is more interested in my character. Amen. Yes. Because my character will take me into eternity. Come on. With my career, won't. Like Paul said, the most important thing that I complete <coughs> is my mission, the work that the Lord Jesus Christ gave me. I'm going to read it, Acts 20 again, the living Bible. But life is worth nothing unless I use it for doing the work signed to me by the Lord Jesus Christ. The work of telling to others the good news about God's mighty kindness and love. Yeah. Jesus told us in Matthew 28, 19 yes. Go ye therefore and teach all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Question was always asked, also asked, what 
what I want to do before I die is to tell people the good news of the grace of God. Before I die, I want to see all my family and my loved ones saved. Yeah, yeah. My dream is to one day be in God's presence, see Jesus face to face, and one day be reunited with all my family that's gone with both. Yes. Ready with both before me. That's, that's what I'm here for, to share the gospel. Yeah. As many people, taking many people to heaven with me. That's what I am here for. <coughs> Short, sweet. That's what I am. Good. Good. Very good. Very good. Now, you said, what, what are we doing? What we're doing is answering the question. <laughs> you need to know why you're here. Yeah. On Sunday nights, I've been talking about our purpose. And this was one, this was actually question number three of those questions that I gave you. Okay? Why am I here? That means there's a reason. Everyone has a reason. Hear me now. Everyone has a reason that they're alive. It's not just to go through the motions of life. It's not just to uh, get married and uh, have a family and all of these things. It's not even for your job. All of those things are just a piece of life. There is a reason you exist on this planet. Every one of us. And that's what we're talking about tonight is why am I here? What's the reason that I'm here? So he gave you some of those reasons tonight that the Lord has shown him. Those are all wonderful reasons. Amen. 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 Now the question is, what's God showing you? Right. Now, I'm not going to ask how many have done their homework. Okay? Because I know some of you have and some of you haven't. Some of you have gotten through one or two of the questions, but not all five. Okay? And that's okay. This was never intended to be quick. Alright? I'm 53 years old. I found my purpose a year ago. You see what I'm saying here? Now, I've been headed to my, to my, towards my purpose for many, many years. Okay? Because I had a, a glimpse of my purpose when I was about 24. And I'm starting to see it come to pass now that I've stepped into it. Okay? So, if you haven't answered all the questions yet, don't be upset. It's supposed to take time. You're supposed to be thinking about it. You're supposed to give it some, uh, some of your time so that you can really be serious with this. Okay? And there's some keys that I can give you later to help you. But right now, I want you to work. Amen. All right. Now we're going to talk about another one. All right. And we're going to uh, discuss this. And, and as we're doing this, I want you to picture yourself doing this. Amen. I want you to picture yourself coming up here and sharing your answer to one of these questions. Now, am I going to have you do it? Who knows? We'll see. But... This is family time. This is growing time. And the whole purpose of this is for us to grow together. Amen? So, Sister Shelly's coming, and she's going to share. I'm going to let you announce which one you're going to share. Yeah. yeah. Amen. And, and I, I want her to realize something. Okay? This is family. Amen. Now, when you're at home with your family. Do you have a problem talking? I do. Okay. So tonight, you're with family. No one's here to judge, right? We're all here to support and to grow. And I felt less for her to do this. Amen. 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 So she just happens to be one of the first that gets this opportunity. Because Brother Williams has been quite a bit later. So, amen? Amen. Tell us what you're going to talk about. I am... Um, Talking from Ephesians, the whole 
chapter. Wow. Um, Ephesians is two parts. One through three tells us who we are in Christ. Yes. And four through six tells us what our destiny, where our walk should lead us. Wow. That's good. So I'm going to start off though with my intro scripture. It's in Acts 3, verse 6. Peter and John killed a crippled man on the way to prayer. And they told him, silver and gold have I none, but what I do have, I give you. Yes. They knew they had something. That's right. They knew it. Yeah. Do we? Ooh, that's good. Do we know? My key text is out of St. Corinthians 3, 17 and 18. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yes. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image Ooh. from glory to glory. Yes. Just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Yes. God wants his people to be likened into the image of Jesus. Amen. Which is love. Yes. Once we learn our identity and see ourselves in Christ, and begin to walk our destiny, we will experience revival and transformation. Yes. Our identity in Christ and who we are. And I'm reading from Ephesians 1, 1 through 2. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus? Ephesus. Ephesus. And faithful in Jesus Christ, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. If you are a Christian, you're a saint. One set apart by God for his purposes. Amen. That's what we are. The first thing God extends to us is grace and peace. Verse 3 said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual uh -oh. blessing yes. in the heavenly places in Christ. Yes. That's good. He, uh, that's who we, that's who we are. Yeah. We're joint heirs with Christ. That's good. And what is His, we have access to. Yes. Just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. God chose us. He chose That's us. Good. He knew. Yes. <clears throat> but God, who is rich in mercy because of His great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, yes. made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Yeah. For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Yes. Not of works lest anyone should boast. That scripture told me that this is not about me. Right. That's it. This is, this is not about me. It's about glorifying <coughs> him. And him, <coughs> and him being in me and sharing his word. Yes. For we are his workmanship Created in Christ for good works which God prepared beforehand yep. that we should walk in them. Yes. Yes. You see all the times in this passage the phrase in him and in Christ. So that, that shows you right there it's not about us. Right. Not, not any of us. That's right. <coughs> Having predestined us to adoptions 
adoption as sons of Jesus Christ. Oh. Okay. Having predestined us to adoption as sons of Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Oh, yes. And that's what William was talking about. We are to we are to bring pleasure to God. Right. To in in worshiping, in praising, mm -hmm. and giving him credit for everything. Yes, yes. Not only are we chosen by God, we are also predestined to be adopted. This was the plan. Right. This was the plan. These truths speak to our identity. We belong to God, and we have access to all that is His. We became joint heirs with Christ. To the praise of the glory of His grace, by which He made us accepted in the beloved. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace, which He made abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Note that every one of these blessings that we receive is through his blood or because of Jesus and his death on the cross. Redemption, the word redemption comes from the greco roman practice of freeing slaves by the paying of a ransom. Jesus purchased us from a life of slavery, then set us free. That's good. Not only that, but we are also now forgiven. This is the antidote to guilt and shame. We no longer have to carry that. Right. We've been redeemed Hallelujah. from that. Yes. For we are his workmanship, his masterpiece. Just like a master artist creates a work of art, God created you into who you are. That's right. Ephesians 4 and 1. Therefore, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, yes. endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Yes. What does it mean to walk worthy of the calling? Do we know? Mm -hmm. Our destiny is in Him. And we have to do it with with love and and, and, and long suffering and with humility and lowliness and gentleness. We have to do that. The Amplified Bible adds with behavior that is a summons to God's service. Lowliness is humility, having a humble opinion of yourself which is the opposite of being proud. Right. And following the example of Jesus who did not come to be served, but to serve. Gentleness, being gentle is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Long-suffering is patience, which is another fruit of the Holy Spirit. But when the Holy Spirit controls our life, He will produce this kind of fruit in us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness Gentleness and self-control. That comes from Galatians 5:22 and 23. Yeah. Bury with one another in love. And that's keeping the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And that means to guard the unity. Yes. We have to, Critical. as a church, as brothers and sisters in Christ, guard that unity with one another. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the key to being Christ-like. Once we learn our identity and see ourselves in Christ and begin to walk our destiny, we will experience revival transformation in our church, families, and our community. When we 
We attended the National Day of Prayer today. It was awesome. The prayers that those pastors prayed over Yazoo City was awesome. You know, we've, we've had a lot of violence since the first of the year. And to see those pastors bind together in unity for one purpose, you could feel the Holy Spirit there. It was awesome. It was just an awesome presence of the Lord there today. Ephesians 4 and 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers. Yes. For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to be the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro carried about with every kind of doctrine come on. by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitfulness plotting but speaking the truth in love may grow in all things into him who is the head, and that's Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. We, um, we just, we just got to all work together in it. But this, this comes from prayer and supplication yes. and, and working together right. for one goal. That's right. Yes. And that's to reach the lost. Come on. Amen. And we have to bind together and fight the enemy. Yes. Yes. Because we're not fighting flesh and blood. Amen. We are not fighting flesh and blood. The devil comes at us from every angle. From every angle. Yeah. He tries to attack us in our marriages, in our relationships with our children, yes. in our relationships with our mom and dad. In our relationship with each other, he does that. In our finances, he tries to get us down in our finances. Used to, I would say, what now? Don't ever say that. Because <laughs> he will show you what now. <laughs> All right, Ephesians 6, starting with 10. And we all know this one. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yes. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Yes. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Yes. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Yes. <clears throat> growing, growing in this Word, and this is the one of the parts that I love about it, the Spirit-filled Bible, that it gives you truth and action. And I want to share that with you. Growing in godliness means learning to live a life that honors God and follows the example of Christ. 
Live in such a way that your life will be a fragrant offering pleasing to the Lord. Live in Christ's love. Let your life be a fragrant aroma of worship to the Lord. Live as light. Walk in goodness, righteousness, and truth. And seek to understand God's will for your life. Be careful to live wisely, making the most of the time and opportunities you have. We're not ever to pass up a, an opportunity to tell somebody about Jesus. Come on. To tell why he, he lived, why he came and he lived and he died for you, for me. We cannot, we cannot pass that opportunity up. We can't pass the opportunity to encourage one another. We can't do that. We have to be here for, for everybody. But we tell those around you the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ. Do not allow circumstances to restrain, restrain you from speaking. Seek, hunger, and thirst to know and understand the surpassing greatness of Jesus' love for you. In Him, you are adopted as a child of God. In Him, you are fully accepted. In Him, you will find a love that is higher and deeper than you could ever imagine. Through the Spirit, you can begin to know this love. And in knowing it, you will be filled with the fullness of God. Devote yourself to knowing, living, and experiencing and give Jesus love. Um, this, this right here spoke volumes to me. Many, many, many years ago, before I got saved, I had that victim many times. That it's because of someone else that hurt me um, because my dad, you know, I felt like my dad didn't love me, but I had to perform and be funny and make him laugh so he would think I was funny and he would love me. That would be a quality in me that he would love. But no more. No more. Once you experience the love of Jesus, there's no turning back. There's no turning back. You can't put on that victim mentality. You can't blame somebody else because of the hurts. Because we have to let go of those. We have to forgive them. The Bible says we have to do that. Yes. And in order for us to be an effective worker for Christ and to be able to talk or sing or, or teach a Sunday school class or a youth class or... <coughs> Or even preach from the pulpit. We have to let all that go. Amen. That's right. We can't hold on to that. We can't hold on to that and serve Jesus. We gotta let it go. That's right. Amen. We've got to. Put your trust in Jesus, receive the Holy Spirit, and stand in faith. Clothe yourself daily with the full armor of God so that you can stand against satanic plans and schemes of the devil. By faith, understand that we are in a real spiritual battle and must be alert, watching in prayer and praying in the Spirit. Be committed to praying for all believers. Ephesians invites us to trust and believe in Jesus. When you believe in Him, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Understand that this is a mark of God's ownership of you which brings you under His protection and covering. The Spirit is the down payment of the full inheritance to come. Amen. Put on the whole armor of God. Stand as the victor in the spiritual battle. Pray always with every kind of prayer in the Holy Spirit. Be steadfast and watch. Ever pray sacrificially and faithfully. And that's just about the also. It's your
I wanted to see if anybody got that out of what she said. Anybody got anybody know? Who we are. What is it? Who we are? No. They said who we are. Huh? Where we are. Why we Kind of close. Where are we going? Or where are you going? Was her question. Okay? This is part of finding your purpose. You need to know where you're going. Amen? And that's number five. So, uh, now, I didn't assign questions. I let them pick their own. Okay, well, so far, tonight, these, these got to pick their own. Uh, next Thursday, we've got a couple more that will be speaking. And I did assign one, only because there was only one left. <laughs> So, but we're, we're going we're gonna to pick this up. There's five questions, and we want to get into this. So, the questions. Anybody know the questions? Who am I? Who am I? Why am I here? Why am I here? Where am I going? We missed one. We missed one. Number two. Who am I is number one. Where am I from? Where am I from? It's number two. Why am I here, which we discussed tonight. What can I do, and where am I going, which we discussed tonight. Where am I going is your destiny. Where am I going is your destiny. In other words, it is the one thing that God wants you to do before you die. There's something God wants you to do. And that will take you to a place, a position, a season in your life where it's being fulfilled. Now, guess what? I've told you I've stepped into my purpose. But i got a lot to do. In other words, I plan to be around a long time. Amen. Because I have a lot to do. So, I'm going to ask you a question. Is your job preparing you for your destiny? Okay, only you can answer that. But you need to think about this. Is the job that you're performing preparing you for your destiny? If you are retired from a job, is your retirement preparing you for your destiny? This is very important. You say, what do you mean? I'm retired. As long as you're alive, you have something to do. Yes. As long as you're alive, God has a plan for your life. And the question is, in your retirement, are you fulfilling your destiny? Sitting on a beach is not fulfilling destiny. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> You might get some enjoyment out of sitting on a beach, but you won't fulfill your destiny because your destiny, your purpose, is a lot bigger than a beach. Amen. And so you've got to ask these questions. Is the church you're attending helping you fulfill your destiny? If it's not, you're in the wrong church. Point blank. Why do you think I'm pushing some of you out of the boat? I got to help push you so that you will find your purpose and your destiny. Amen. Amen. So, those of you I haven't pushed yet, <coughs> get ready. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Say that again. I don't, know if you, I don't know if you got that. It really is. Here, they didn't hear you. It's like walking the plank. Uh -huh. It really is. Well, everyone will get their time at the plank. <laughs> but it's my job. She covered this in Scripture. Uh -huh. Ephesians 4. God gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting or the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. 
It is my job as part of the ministry to equip you for the work yes, of the ministry. Amen. You're supposed to be working. It's not the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher that's supposed to be out here turning this community upside down. It's the church. So therefore, that's why I'm pushing some and pulling others. Amen. And so, as I feel you're ready, I will push you off into the deep. <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> Kaylee said without the life jacket. <laughs> Amen. Kaylee's already had her little push. But there's more to come. That's right. But you know, when she when she did that, my goodness, how the spirit moved Move. moved on yes. her. It yes. grew her. And, and I didn't get to hear Sister Shelley the first time she spoke. It was in the women's meeting. Yeah. Wasn't there a vast difference tonight? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. I heard about it first. Yes. But see, God told me to have her speak because she was ready. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so... <laughs> If you can see the facial expression. <laughs> God is preparing every one of you for something greater than you. Greater than you. I had a dream the other night that I just preached the police group. <laughs> okay. No, I mean preach the blue spring. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, 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 and I know we're, again, I told you this is family night. Uh -huh. What she just said is she dreamed she preached a blue streak. <laughs> she didn't do that at this time. She shared a lot of words. She shared some good things. What that tells me is God's trying to show her her purpose. There's a preacher in you. There's a preacher okay. in you that has to come out. One on one. I can yes. do one on one, but speaking to the group, I want to swallow my tongue. That's why we're doing this. Yeah. Thank you for speaking to one person. That's right. And that's why this is a training ground. I know it's different. We love we loved this last week, the last weekend, and all the power and all of the, the excitement and the, the move of the spirit. But that didn't happen. <coughs> Hear me? That didn't happen overnight. Right. That happened because of months of preparation. Yeah, right. of we were fasting, we were praying, we were laying down a foundation of the word, and because of it, God came. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Yeah. It, God did not show up just because Sister Sharon came. Right. That's right. And I love Sister Sharon. She's my cousin, and I, re I love her ministry. Mm -hmm. But she'll take you just as much as I'll take you. God was already here. Amen. God was already moving, and God had already worked the soil so he could move when she was here. Yes, amen. Well, that's what we're doing here tonight. We're working the soil a little bit yes. so that, in this case, Mr. <coughs> Shelley is being, you know, worked the little. Tilled up. That's right. And so what God does is he will unearth some things in us to make us reach down and find that part that he put in us that he wants to bring out. And part of what he does is gives us dreams. Mm -hmm. We talked about it two Sunday nights ago. Yeah. It's one of the manifestations of your purpose. Dreams. Now, not every dream is of God, okay? You have to know that. Right. But when it's a godly dream, it should tell you something. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And I told you, the majority of the dreams that I have are of being ministry. The majority. Why? Because God's showing me my purpose. Amen. i got to share a scripture. Is that all right? Oh, it's early. Yeah. Turn in your Bible to first God. By the way, I'm trying not to preach. No, go ahead. First John. Because I am ready to preach. I have been ready all week. Preach? I didn't tell you what. First John chapter 3. 
we are talking about why am I here and where am I going? By the way, she talked about who am I as well. I did. Which is number one, your identity. Remember, she kept saying identity. That's who am I. So she kept talking about it. So we've actually talked about three of the five questions tonight. The whole of Ephesians oh, no. talks about it. You, you still have yours. But no, no, no. You know why? You didn't have that one. Well, it's a, here's the resource. thing. You said, what are my resources? And that's not on here, so I ain't got to worry about it. No, no. It's on there. It's number two. Where am I from? Where am I from? That's your source. <laughs> that's your resource. Okay. She's and trying to get out of something. <laughs> First John, go back and listen to the CD. First John, chapter 3. First John, chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. Who? Us. So it's already done, right? It is. That's right. It's past tense. That's right. So God loves you. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. Now, how do we know that he bestowed upon us? Because he sent his son. That's right. That's right. He sent his son to die for you. It's important. Let's go on. That we should be called Christians. Well, your Bible doesn't say Christians. But the church wants to be called Christians. But I want to be a child of God. Come on. That's right. We want to be called Christians when we're supposed to be sons of God. That's right. I'm going somewhere here. Amen. I'm trying not to preach, but I'm telling you, I'm going somewhere. We want to be called a Christian because it's easier to be called a Christian because the average Christian doesn't mean much. Because Christian means Christ-like. You can be a little bit like him and be called a Christian. But to be called a son of God means something entirely yes, different. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Ooh. Yes, it does. You see where I'm headed with this? Yes, amen. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us because he's called you to be sons of God. Sons of God. When you become called a son of God, you become equal with Christ. That's because it. he's the son of God. That's, that's right. You don't take his place, you can't. You can't. But because of his finished work, you get to be, uh, the best way I can put it, engrafted in with him. You're no longer on the outside. Israel was on the outside yeah. looking in. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I don't think you got that. Yeah. Israel was on the outside. They had to stay outside in the outer court. Uh -huh. They couldn't come in. That's right. And only a handful, only the ministry was able to come into the inner court. That's right. And they came in to do service to God, but there was only one that got to go into the Holy of Holies. And that was once again. But we've been called sons of God, and because we're sons of God, we can come boldly into the throne of grace. So there's a big difference here. Yes, amen. Amen. Beloved, or behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Let's look on. Therefore, big word. Uh -huh. Therefore, the world knows us not. not. Oh, boy. The problem with the church is they want to be known. We have struggled for years to be known in our communities. We've struggled to be seen and to be recognized. And he said, the world doesn't know you. We've got to quit trying to be known. We've got to quit trying to be recognized. I, I, I could care less who recognizes me or this church. Amen. I could care less. Amen. Why? Because if God recognizes us, that's all that matters. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We can build on that. The world knows us not. Now, why don't they know you? Because they didn't know him. That's right. If they 
know Jesus, guess what? They'll know you. But the world doesn't know him. The word world does not mean earth. World is exactly that. It's a system. The world system did not know Jesus, did not recognize Jesus. And by the way, intertwined in that system is a thing called religion. That's the system. And the system did not recognize Jesus when he came. So if they didn't recognize him, they're not going to recognize you because you're sons of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now let's go on. Therefore the world knows us not because it knew him not. Sister Shelly, you did this. I'm sharing this because of your, what you shared. Because this is what rose up in my spirit when she shared. Verse 2. Beloved, I love that. Now are we the sons of God. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. When are we the sons? Not when we die and go to heaven? But the church has told us that, that, you know, just hang on in there. Just hang on until Jesus comes and takes you away or until you die, and you'll be like it. The scripture says you are right now, sons of God. That's here. Amen. And I've got to tell you something. You either are or you're not. That's here. There's no middle ground in this. You're either of the flesh or you're of the spirit. You're either of Isaac or you're of Ishmael. Wow. Yeah. You, can, yeah. you can keep going with this. You see what I'm, where I'm going? You're either of God or you're of the devil. That's right. Whoa. That's right. So therefore, there are people who don't know who they are. Who am I? Question number one. So if you don't know who you are, You'll believe a lie. Right. That's right. Therefore, the majority of the church is believing a lie, and they call themselves Christians uh. instead of sons of God. So when you introduce yourself, what should you be saying? You need to say it a lot louder. Son of God, or son of God. My name is Dan Durbin. I'm the son of God. <laughs> yeah. You see where, where, where this is? They still won't know you. As a matter of fact, when you introduce yourself that way, they're going to look at you even weirder. They don't understand sonship. That's right. But they're never going to understand it as long as the church is stuck in religion. Amen. Once they see, hear me now, there was, how can I say this one? Until Jesus came, all they knew was religion. That's it. Uh -huh. All they knew was the system. Every year bringing the sacrifice, going through the motions, it's all they knew. Therefore, they did it and they did it and they did it. But when Jesus came on the scene, they were drawn to him because he was different. He was not just a man. He was the son of God. Amen. Amen. And when you start walking in your sonship, who you are. Amen. Identity. When you start walking in the identity of sonship, it changes your life. Yes, hallelujah. Once you know who you are, sons of God, yes, you is. now recognize your source. Hallelujah. Or where you're from. Yes. Hallelujah. And once you know who you are, you know where you're from, you can't help but know why you're here. I'm giving you hints. Yes, you are. <laughs> What's your topic? 
I just told them. Yeah, you wear like apps or what Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you know who you are, these two are ministry next, next Thursday. Tag team. It's going to be fun. Once you know who you are, you now know who your source is, you know why you're here, and guess what? You'll also know what you can do. But until you know these things, you'll never know where you're going. Isn't that tight again? Can you do that again? I don't know if I can. <laughs> Once you know who you are, you'll know where you're from, you'll know why you're here, and you'll know what you're able to do, which will in turn let you know where you're going. That's right. The five questions. That's it. That's why I gave you those five questions. Amen. You still need to answer those. Let's go on. Beloved, now, right now, not in the future. Right now, you got to get it set. Right now, we are the sons of God. Look at the rest. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. It's kind of like the caterpillar and the butterfly. You may look one way right now, but as you start walking in your sonship, as you start relating to the source, as you start knowing why you're here, as you start tapping into your potential and you start knowing where to go, why? Because the caterpillar always knows where he has to go. I told you I'd try to preach. The caterpillar has to go to the cocoon. So he can be a butterfly. That's why you're being pulled or pushed to do something uncomfortable. Because it's never comfortable to evolve into that that God wants you to be. But you're going to get there. Amen. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Wait a minute. We know that we shall be what? Like him. But why? Because we'll finally see him as he is. Face to face. There's a clue right there. You see, the church has said, we got to wait till we die so we can be changed. But the scripture says we're supposed to be changed by the word of God. Amen. We're supposed to be being transformed by the renewing of our minds right now. We're being changed by the word and the spirit into the image of Christ. Therefore, when he appears, by the way, there are many appearings of Christ. I knew that one would go over well. <laughs> there are many appearings of Christ. When we read this, we read everything in a box. Therefore, when we read it, we, are, we have automatically put this to the coming of Christ back to the earth. But the word appearing <coughs> can mean many things. And the Lord is appearing in this church Amen. even now. Amen. Amen. As he reveals himself, he's appearing. Am I too deep? Do you, do you understand what I'm yes. talking about? Yes. As he opens our understanding to the revelation of the word of God, that is an appearing. He's yeah. showing up. As the spirit of God opens our eyes of our understanding, that is an appearing of God. Yes. Why? Yes. Because we find the see. Yes. And what do we see? We see Jesus. Amen. Amen. In a 
whole new life. Yeah. Did Jesus change? No. But you finally see. You get what I'm talking about? And as you finally see, what does it do to you? It changes you. How? Because now you know, I'm becoming like him. I'm becoming like him. I'm becoming like him. Why? Because I see him. You can only become something you can see. Well, I'm going to say it a different way. You become what you look upon. So if you look upon the church of God, you become church of God. Right. Yeah. If you look upon religion, you become religious. That's right. yeah. But if you look upon Jesus, you become the Son of God. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's where we're at. And that's why we're opening up these questions. So I challenge you again, answer the five questions. Because within those five questions is your destiny and your purpose. Hear me? We are destined, or predestined, if you will, to be conformed. Romans 8, 28, 29. All things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. To whom he foreknew before the foundations of the earth, and predestined to be conformed into the image of his son, Jesus. Hallelujah. So you are destined to something. But every believer is destined to be conformed into the image of Christ, but there is one thing God wants you to do that I can't do. There's something. I don't know what it is. Only you and God know. In this house are many people that are destined for greatness. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to go there. I'll save that for next Thursday. Because I'm about to get in their stuff. Uh-oh. Okay, give us some ideas. You are predestined to do something. That is question number four. What can I do? What can I do? There is something God has planned for you to do that nobody else can do. The average church person doesn't know that. The average Christian is content with life the way it has been, and they think that they're fulfilling their life's calling, doing what they've been doing. But the majority, I'm going to talk about this Sunday night, are living in frustration. Oh. Anybody ever been frustrated? Yes. Be here Sunday night. Yes. Because we're going to talk about it. Why you're frustrated. We're going to get deep into it. Amen. So, beloved, now are we the sons of God. Right now. And we, it does not yet appear what we shall be. I really love that verse. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that we'll be like it. But wait a minute. If we know we're going to be like him, then how can we can't tell what we will be? In other words, you don't yet see what you need to see. You do not yet have the vision to see what God is trying to do in you and through you. But as you become closer to him, your eyes will be opened and you will be able to see more of God and you will see him doing more through you than you've ever imagined. So, Sister Shelley, tonight was a beginning. Amen. So get ready. Because there's more. You say, well, Brother Dan, I don't feel like I did that good. That's okay. Don't worry about it. I think you did great. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 I think 
be great. Matter of fact, you might a lot longer than I thought. And cover a lot of good stuff. I talk slow. I give mine on to you. Person's That's okay. So, we are sons of God. So, I'm going to ask you one question. Why are you in this church? Anybody can answer? God told me to come. Good, good. Anybody else? Predestined to be here. Predestined to be here? That's good. Anybody else? God won't let her leave. That's good. That's good. Hey, it's, it, the truth is the truth. That's it. We try. But there's a lot of times exactly. we try. Yes. Yes. He would not let us. What is it? They asked us to come. They asked us to come. <laughs> we wanted y'all here. We need Anybody you. got anything else? Why you're here? They get everything out of the heart. To learn. <laughs> Yes. To, learn. to learn. All of those things that you said are correct, but this is training ground. That's right. That's why we're here. I know this is not the normal church. I told you, I'm not a normal pastor. Amen. Amen. I will never be normal. I'm going to talk about this thing. I will never be normal, and you're not supposed to be either. That's right. That's right. And that's the problem. We've been normal for too long. Too long. And now we're going to finally get into what we're supposed to be. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is a training ground. So we're going to do things differently here than most churches. And I'm okay with that. Amen. Now, I, again, and I'm saying this for a reason. I love power pack services. Yes, they do. We'll have some of those Sunday. Yes. But Thursday's training though. Amen. This is family time. Are our, our, our guests invited? Sure. Everybody's invited. We want everyone that, that wants to come to come. The unbeliever, the believer, oh, I don't care what denomination they go to. Why? Because they'll grow too. Yes, amen. Amen. Everybody can learn. In this atmosphere. Because we're going to love each other. Hear me? We're going to encourage each other. Yes, amen. And out of this, we're each going to find our gift. In this house, there are singers that have not yet come out. That's right, amen. In this house, I saw some eyes roll. In this house, there are some preachers that have yet to be birthed. In this house is some actors that haven't come forth. You say actors. What does God need actors for? You can spread the gospel by acting. Right. Yes, well. In this house are artists that have yet to tap into their potential. In this house are musicians that haven't found their potential yet. So, I don't care if you're five years old or 105. It's not too late to find your potential. It's not too late to find your purpose. That's right, amen. Because as long as you're breathing, God has something for you to do. Now, what is that one thing? I don't know. Unless God tells me. I'm waiting on him. But as he tells me, I'll start pushing so get ready. Amen. Amen. So in the near future, some things are going to start changing in this house. Hallelujah. Amen. God does everything on purpose. Yes, amen. Everything. So in the near future, I'm going to start making some changes. And I'm going to start putting some people in some different positions than they're used to. Don't come up asking me for a position. Hear me. I'm telling you in advance. Because God's going to tell me where. I have total confidence in him. He has never failed me yet, and he won't fail me now. 
So Thursday night is training ground. So get ready because in the next few weeks, we're going to change the worship team for Thursday night. Sunday's not changing, but Thursday nights is going to change. You say, why? Because we're going to raise up some more singers. Amen. Amen. Yes, amen. Training ground. Amen. Amen. Now, with that comes responsibility. What does she say? Our target is going to be I'm not going there. <laughs> with this comes responsibility. Because as I add people to the worship team, there'll need to be a commitment. If you want to find your purpose, you got to commit. That's right. Well, brother, then I'm just not comfortable. I understand. The first time I got up, I wasn't comfortable. Even now, sometimes when I sing, I'm not comfortable. What? I know it's hard to believe. Exactly. <laughs> when I sang a few weeks ago, I was nervous. That's okay. You're supposed to do that. Okay. <laughs> you do better when you're nervous. And... Honestly, that's normal. That's humility. But we're getting out of normal into the abnormal. That's right, amen. Okay? And when I say out of the normal, I'm talking about is the earthly normal. Okay? And we're going to learn how to be normal in the spirit. That's right, So get ready. We're going to make some changes, and I've already got some ideas. Hallelujah. Some things that I feel. Use this more. Use amen. Us. Amen. How many are in agreement? Amen. You want God to do what He wants to do, and you. Yes, amen. Wait a minute. Hold your hands up again. Hold high. Woo! Okay, that means you're getting permission. Amen. <laughs> Tricked you, didn't it? <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. So we've stepped out of the boat or started. And some of you are going to step out next week. And you don't want to miss next week. It's going to be good. I promise you, it's going to be good. And uh, uh, Renee, I want you to proceed with something I told you. Okay? I, I'll talk to you after. Okay? Because I've already I've already talked to her about something. And, and, and I would like to I would like to get this started. Amen. Why? It's time to step. Got to take a, you have to take little steps before you can run. We, we have to tackle this just like a baby. That's right. Okay? You're stepping off into something you've never done before. A baby wobbles when they first start walking. And guess what? They fall down. So are you going to fall down? Yes. Are you going to skin your knee? Yes. But what are we going to do? We're going to get right back up. We're going to dust ourselves off. And we're going to go again. And we're going to dust ourselves off. And we're going to go again. And as we do, we're going to get stronger. And as we get stronger, we'll learn how to rely on the Spirit. Because the Spirit is the minister, not us. He's the one that's going to make all the difference. So as we fall down and get back up and fall down and get back up, He will strengthen you. You will be strong. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for the word of God tonight. We thank you, Lord, that you have spoke a word in this church that is being birthed into existence right now. Inside of the hearts and lives of the people of this church, you have already begun to stir us into new areas. I thank you, Father, for that that you are doing. I thank you, Father God, for the strength and the courage to step in to what you're calling us. I thank you, Father, that you're working with each and every one. And, Father God, as you continue to work, that each and every one will take a step of faith so that you can meet them there. We thank you in advance for a mighty move of God not only in this church, but in this community. We thank you for souls being saved. We thank you, Lord, for hearts being changed. And we thank you for revelation knowledge concerning Jesus Christ living and abiding in us. 
In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.